Hi, I'm Marshall. I'm the owner of Going Gear, and this is the extended review of the Claris ST2C and ST11 flashlights. All right, here we have the Claris ST2C ST11. Pretty similar lights. I went ahead and pulled the ST2C out of the packaging and put a battery in it because it has the same general features and interface and all that kind of stuff as the ST11, but obviously different size, slightly different output. So let's go ahead and pull this out of the packaging and show you what you get. 900 lumens on max output on the ST11, 820 on the ST2C, and a pretty good beam distance on both. You've got 177 meters on the ST11, 150 meters on the ST2C. And as always, you can get the full specs on our site if you want to see all the full run times and uh, the different outputs and all that kind of stuff. Goinggear.com, and I'll have a link down in the description. Other stuff that you have, you have a lanyard, spare O-ring, uh, warranty, user manual, all kinds of information in this thing. Definitely worth a read. You know, any of these lights gives you proper care, compatible batteries, and all that kind of stuff. Speaking of compatible batteries, you can power these with two CR123s, two RCR123s, which are rechargeable lithium ion batteries that are the size of CR123s, or an 18650. If you've ever watched my videos before, you know that I always recommend 18650s if the light is compatible with it, with one caveat. The one caveat being if you intend on leaving the light in a place like your truck or your glove box or somewhere like that, we're not going to be using it for extended periods. So six or more months, you know, this is more of an emergency th kind of thing. Definitely go for CR123s because they have amazing shelf life. You're 10 years for most of the good ones on the market, like all your USA made uh, Surefires and Duracells and stuff like that. 10 year shelf life. So they're good to have as an emergency light uh, uh, power source. But given that, if you're going to be using that on a regular basis, absolutely use 18650s. And the ones we always recommend are the Eagle Tac ones, either the 3100 or the 3400 milliamp hour ones, which is this guy right here. Relatively inexpensive for what you get. You know, if you consider feeding this thing with CR123s over and over, kind of adds up. These are definitely worth it in the long run. You pretty much always get the best run time with these. And uh, a lot of times you'll get the same or better output as compared to uh, CR123s or RCR123s. Of course, that varies light to light. But definitely worth it, uh, especially if you're going to be using the light on a regular basis. You know, military and law enforcement guys, we always try to point them towards those because feeding this thing CR123s can get kind of pricey, either one of these. So, two different lights, ST2C, ST11. Big difference is gonna be the size of the head. So this is gonna be a more of a floody beam. This is gonna be a little bit more concentrated beam. And you're gonna see that better when we go outside. You can also see a little bit different body diameter. So slightly wider diameter on the ST11. You're gonna be at that one inch diameter that most of your like weapon mounts and stuff like that are gonna be made for. Slightly more narrow diameter on, uh, on the ST2C. But other than that, same interface, very similar specs in terms of the output and everything. Different beam distance just because you have that larger head and the wider reflector on the ST11. So let's go ahead and throw a battery in the ST11. We'll open it up just so you can see the inside and everything. Cree XML2 LEDs on both of these. You actually have a smooth reflector on the ST2C, which is kind of interesting since it's not the one with the more beam distance. And a lightly orange peeled reflector or actually that's a pretty heavily orange peeled reflector on the ST11. We'll stick a battery down in there. Let you see the inside of that. Nice thick walls on this one, so really durable light. Can take a lot of abuse. I'll go ahead and put that head back on there. Pocket clip on there, so you can pop that off of either one if you don't like it. You got the lanyard attachment point right here. Both of these are made to be able to tail stand. If you like to be able to tail stand your light, you can do that both of these lights. So you got the flat bottom on there and then the switch is slightly recessed. So it's not going to interfere with having the light tail stand. It's a nice feature on there. All right. So you have two switches on both of these lights. And again, same interface on both. You got the rear switch and the side switch. The rear switch is kind of like your kill switch. So if you hit that, it's going to turn the light on. Once you have that touched, you can just use the side switch from then on if you want to. So the side switch, if you just tap it, You'll see it'll turn the light off and it'll go into what they call standby mode. So it is drawing a very, very minimal amount of power, but it's gonna take an extremely long time for it to drain your battery. So don't worry about it draining your batteries or anything like that. Unless of course you're storing it. So if you have it stored, pop that rear switch and turn it off. Otherwise you're fine using just the side switch if you want to. So from off the interface, if you press and hold for less than a second, you can see you have momentary 
press and hold for longer than a second, and you have constant on. There is mode memory on here, so if you're cycling through the modes, if you're in one for longer than I believe three seconds, it'll memorize that mode for when you turn it back on. To switch to the other modes, press and hold. And each time you do that, you see it'll cycle through your different outputs. And that's the lowest one, which is uh, right around a lumen or less than a lumen, so pretty low output. Great for up close kind of stuff and amazing battery life on this. So you can get something like 100 days of battery life on this output. And you can see it'll cycle back up when you go through the other modes. Actually, I'm, I'm questioning my own claim. <laughs> Let me look at the packaging and see. 700 hours, so still pretty impressive runtime. That's uh, a little less than 30 days. So still pretty amazing runtime that you can get on that lowest output. So again, you've got mode memory on there. So if you leave it in there for longer than three seconds, if you turn it off, turn it back on, it's gonna be back in that same mode, including when you do the momentary. You also have some flashing modes in there. So to get into the flashing modes, if you have it on, double click, it'll go into strobe. And when you have it in strobe, if you press and hold, it will go into SOS. And then you can just tap that switch and it'll go off. Or if you have it in the strobe, and you tap it, it'll go into the uh, back into the regular illumination mode. So when you have it in the SOS and you tap it, it'll go off. And then in SOS or in strobe, it'll go just uh, into the regular illumination mode. So again, real quick on the interface. Tap it, less than a second will be your momentary. Press and hold for more than a second will be your constant on. Press and hold while it's on. Each time you do that, it'll cycle through your four different outputs. Double click for strobe. When it's in strobe, press and hold and it'll go into SOS. Then you can tap it in SOS to turn it off or tap it in uh, strobe to get into your regular illumination modes. And the kill switch on the back, tap it. Side switch isn't gonna do anything because you're at an, looking at an electronic switch over here, mechanical switch over here. So when the mechanical switch is disengaged, it's not gonna turn on. One other thing you have on here that is pretty cool it's a nice little option that they have. You know, a lot of lights on the market, they have integrated uh, USB recharging, which is nice. It's nice to ha not have to take your batteries out and take everything apart, but that adds some bulk and weight and a lot of times cost. And uh, one of the biggest complaints that we've seen is a lot of them will have those little rubber ports that cover up the USB recharging and that can pop off or break, or you gotta worry about stuff getting in there, you know, water and grime and things like that. Sometimes they don't seal all that well. Well, Claris has a different option for that. So what they have is a little charging unit that you can get. So this is an optional accessory that you can get. And what it does is you take the head of the light off and this tiny little unit just screws right onto there. So you can take and just screw it on to the wrong flashlight. <laughs> I have the one for the ST2C here, not the ST11. So you can take and just screw it right on there. As you can tell, they're not interchangeable. So there is one for the ST11, there's one for the ST2C. So it screws right on there, and then you've got a micro USB port there. And you've got an included cable, or any of the ones from your iPhone, or not iPhone, because that's a different cable, your HTC phone, or Samsung, or anything like that, that uses a micro USB. Most of, has, most of us have 10 or 15 of these things lying around. You can use any of the cables, so you don't have to worry about accidentally misplacing this or anything like that. So anyway, take that, plug it into your uh, your car adapter or your wall charger or anything like that, your laptop, and you can charge your flashlight. So pretty cool charging option that they have on here. Something different, you know, something I haven't seen from any other manufacturers. Uh, it's not integrated into the light, which does add a little bit of time. You just gotta take the head off and you gotta put that thing on. But, you know, we're talking about mere seconds. So it's not an inordinate amount of time. And it is a really elegant option and it keeps the integrity of the light. So you don't have to worry about any little charging ports or anything like that failing or getting grime or anything like that in them. So nice option. So this is the optional uh, charging unit. They have it for both the ST2C and the ST11. So there you go. That's the interface and everything for the Claris ST2C, ST11. We're gonna take both of these outside. You'll be able to see them side by side. Let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so we're outside with the Claris ST2C and ST11. We're going to compare them to the big 40 mag light that I always use just as a baseline since pretty much everybody's familiar with these things. There's a dock house about 100 feet away down there, shining around on the uh, bushes and trees and other stuff. 
Okay, let's go ahead and try out the ST2C, show you how it does. So there you go. Pretty impressive amount of light coming out of a light this size, just to show you it really is that light. Shine that around a little bit, focus in on that dock house a little bit better. So a lot of light coming out of this little guy. Nice compact size, pretty good interface on it. And you have those lower outputs when you need them. And just to show you what those look like, we'll go ahead and cycle it down to the uh, lower outputs. There's the medium, there's your low. Great for up close kind of stuff. Or you don't want to blind yourself or when you want to get better battery life for uh, up close kind of stuff. And then the even lower one, even better. And then you have the max output when you need it. So four different levels, very usefully spaced. You know, all of them have their purposes. I, uh, I definitely use all four of them when I use the light myself. Okay, let's try out the ST11. So a little bit more focus beam on this. Still good distance on it, still a whole lot of output. And uh, we'll do them side by side here in just a second, just so you can see what they look like side by side. But larger head, larger reflector. You can see a little bit more focus beam on this one. And of course you have the other output still when you need them. Cycle through those. Still got that low, low when you need it. Real up close kind of stuff. Reading books and looking around inside your pack or tent or whatever. And you can bump it up to the high when you need it. Okay, so we're going to have the ST11 on the left, ST2C on the right. Show you the difference in the beam patterns. So we'll just shine the, uh, that's the ST2C, ST11. You can kind of see the di difference between them. And we're going to do a longer distance here in just a second. Show you it a little bit better. Okay, let's try out a longer distance with these guys. Okay, we got some more distance to use with the uh, ST2C and ST11. Let's go ahead and do the 2C first. There's the targets I use for the long distance comparison videos. First one's out at 50 yards, second one's out there at 100 yards, and then the tree line beyond, you can see the lighter parts of it, that's 130 yards. Let's follow that pretty well. Not too bad for a light this size. Not meant to be a super thrower, but you can see how wide and floody the beam is. There's a lot of lumens coming out of this thing. Boat's out there at about 20 feet away. Let me show you the different output levels. And then of course the lowest one, the super up close kind of stuff. All right, here's the uh, ST11. Crank it up to high. Zoom in on that. There you can see a little bit better distance that you get on it out of the different targets. A little bit more focus beam compared to the ST2C. Okay, let's do them side by side. So we're gonna have the ST11 on the right, ST2C on the left, kind of shine them back and forth. You can see the wider beam on the ST2C compared to the ST11. Okay, so there you go. That's the Claris X ST2C and ST11. You can buy them from us at goinggear.com. Any questions or comments, you can reach me in the comments or at goinggear.com. And if you liked the video, be sure to subscribe. I put out a lot of gear and flashlight videos. Thanks for watching.